think we've got Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Hi, guys. Maggie. Hello, Hello Maggie. Maggie. How is everyone? Excellent. How are you? How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Welcome to the Addiction Connection podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm your host, Mark Shaw, and I've got Jim Quigley and CJ McMurray in studio with me or through Zoom, along with special guest Maggie Boggin. Do you guys know each other? No, we don't. I know she's got credentials that are off the charts, though. No, not really. <laughs> this is a funny story, CJ. I know who you are. And I actually met Jim Quigley in 2020 at the only summit that I attended. I thought you were in North Carolina. I was surprised to see you in Washington. But in any case, I was um, certified under NANC. Um, and I went to the meeting to receive my uh, certificate. And lo and behold, I received my NANC certificate. I wish I still had it, but I don't. And then in the same meeting, we go outside. Mark was there. It was in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. And we come back in, and they voted to change it to ACBC. So I have a NAIC bag and an ACBC bag all in the same meeting. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That is funny. And Mark's responsible for all this because he and Dr. Eirich and Shirley, because they all had uh, the meetings in Birmingham at the Briarwood Presbyterian Church, where I took my fundamentals of biblical counseling. And at the same time, it's kind of funny, I was attending Celebrate Recovery meetings because I thought I wanted to bring that to my church. And I was asking Mark what he thought of Celebrate Recovery. And being the gracious, grace-filled person that he is, he's on one foot and then on the next. And he carries me to somebody else and said, it was Rick Thomas. Rick, explain to her about the 12-step program. <laughs> <laughs> and Maggie is a delight, and you guys are going to enjoy getting to know her a little bit here. Uh, Maggie, tell them how we met. You just told it, uh, but tell it again on air this time. <laughs> well, it was 2011, and it was uh, six weeks after my husband died. Mm. And the Briarwood Presbyterian Church was having a biblical counseling, fundamentals of biblical counseling training seminar and someone that was trying to help me through grief recovery brought a friend over to my house and this friend suggested that I go to this seminar and I thought okay I'll go and so I didn't really know which world I was in and your dad graciously told me that Mark and uh, Ronnie and so anyway I fell in love with what I heard and I met Mark and Dr. Eirich and Shirley Crowder there at that first Fundamentals of Biblical Counseling and love the Word of God, fell in love with that, with the Word and continue to want to grow and learn more and more and help others to do the same. Maggie was so precious. She was um, just, like she said, brand new to this whole world of biblical counseling, just like I was at one point. I had no idea what, what this was. And, and, and as I heard it and started reading, I was like you, Maggie. I was like, yes, this is what I believe. This is what I want to do. I got so excited, but I was just a newborn babe. You know, I needed Dr. Eric and, and Lou Priolo to steer me and direct me and tame this wild horse that I am and help me to kind of get directed on the right goal. Mm -hmm. And you were that way too. I mean, I remember you just took to all this biblical counseling stuff, just like a a sponge takes the water. You just soaked it all in. And it was a, it was a joy to watch you grow and get, and get more and more uh, aware of certain things as you, as you got into this. So, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't it was believe it's too funny, Mark, because I had already been exposed to quote unquote biblical counseling through the AACC and not to name names, but um, I had listened to their videos and I came back and I said, this is fine, but I still don't know what to say to people about what they're supposed to do from the Bible. And mm -hmm. so right after that is when I found out about the NAIC uh, training session. And then I thought, okay, I can learn what I'm supposed to do from the Bible. So I was doubly excited having been to exposed to something that gave me a lot of suggestive uh, cultural 
applications, but nothing really from God's word that I could use to help myself or others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. CJ, what was your uh, impression of Maggie like when you first met her a few minutes ago? I was like, why? She's a Jim. Why do I, I should have not Jim Quigley, way different. Jim G E M. <laughs> I just think, like, <laughs> I believe we call that a gem. <laughs> so, no, what I was just blown away at, uh, I don't know, just right away. I mean, we just met like, what, 10 minutes ago? And I could just, I don't know, the, the love, your love for Christ and your love for God's word just, and your humility just pours, poured out of you right off the bat. And so I'm just, I'm stoked to get to know you more and, uh, and just, yeah. Wow. And I, and it's really neat to see how you met Mark and Shirley and Howard Irick and just how God has used all that. I'm just, I'm just excited to hear. I don't, I just want to shut up and listen, but uh, I appreciate that's rare. I appreciate your comment, CJ, because uh, Mark can tell you I'm a truth person and he gives tests to people because I volunteered. Not only did I go to his seminar, but I volunteered to work with Mark and Shirley. And uh, then he whoosh. gives you a test to see if you're truth or grace. And mm-hmm. so everybody that knows me thought, okay, well, she's going to be about 80, 20. But I'm afraid to take it again, Mark, because I actually scored 53, 47. And so I, it, you're growing. That, wasn't, that wasn't as far off the truth side as people would have predicted. Oh, yeah, great. you're a good balance of truth and grace. I, I, I think you're better. You're you're a good balance. You're like Jesus, full oh. of grace, <laughs> full of truth. Yeah. Well, and right now you're in Georgia. Is that correct? That's right. I'm with Faith Bible Church. I moved down here during COVID in 2020, September of 2020. And um, I came from a church where I was the only certified biblical counselor. Although we had tried to get people interested in um, becoming certified, including the pastoral staff, and they were interested in biblical counseling, but not the certification process. And so I really longed for um, like-minded people, if you will, and I had become friends with uh, several people from the church down here. And I thought, okay, I'm going to make the move. And so during COVID, I moved here and I've been here about 19 months and uh, I love it. I still have friends in Birmingham. I'm sure you do too. And, uh, you know, Birmingham will always be near and dear to my heart. I was born there, lived in the same house in Alabama for 18 years. And then ever since I've lived all over the world in different places, first uh, through being married to a military man And then now it's just, well, where does God want me to be? And what does he want me to be doing? Mm. (laughs) Wow. Now you're, you're in, uh, is that uh, the church where Martha Peace worships? I was just about to ask the same, yeah. Yes, it is. In fact, she's one of the friends that I talked with before I came down here. Oh, right. uh, Yes. She, uh, in fact, I'm in my last class at the master's university to complete my MABC. And so she began being an adjunct professor with master's. Since she's written so many books, she's able to supervise people that are doing their thesis outline. And so she began that process last year. And so now she's my, actually my supervisor for my thesis project. And I don't know which one of us, um, this is a comment about, but my first topic got rejected. So now I'm, <laughs> I'm writing on a, a biblical, well, a counseling approach for women enslaved to um, the, the sin of drunkenness, this mm. robbed sin of drunkenness. Awesome. Yeah. And Me. it sounds like a walking awesome. advertisement for either Tech or Mark Shaw or any, <laughs> Yes, it really does. But I've had to throw a few other people in there. So CJ yeah. and Jim, if y'all want to make any comments for my thesis, feel free to do so or shoot me an email and I'll include you. We're going to rock. We're going to steal. We might steal it from you. There you go. I'll be happy to share it. <laughs> Jim well, needs Mar- it. Martha came in. Martha came in. Uh, 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 she she came to uh, speak in. I think it was uh, typical. 
it was either marriage and family class or typical problems at RTS. And um, I commuted to RTS um, from Boone for my classes. And uh, the Neuheisers would let me stay at their house if I had to stay overnight. Well, and uh, and I, it was like, a, I think an intensive course. So we, I was there for a week and I was staying with the Neuheisers. And so was Martha. And I forget her, her husband's got a cool name. What's his name again? Lanky. Yeah. Yeah. So they, uh, I got to have dinner with them after class a few nights and um, she gave me a personally signed book. I was, uh, it was really nice to get to, to meet her. So she's that's, that's precious. awesome. You guys work together. Yeah. She and is. She's hilarious too. I, I love her sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, she, she is totally hilarious. Hey, I always, Maggie, I always have to ask this question. Um, so in my, in my, you know, my, my life story, I grew up um, in South Florida and uh, I was at the, I grew up in, in a PCA church in Lake Worth, Florida. And the pastor of that church was kind of like a spiritual father to me to the point that, um, uh, uh, you know, he just was, you know, kind of just there at these really big parts, times of my life. And he finished his last 10 years at, um, at uh, uh, Birmingham working with the, uh, the uh, church revitalization. Um, so I didn't know. Do you know the Downings by any chance? No, I don't. Oh, so, oh well. Wow. Um, uh, I always uh, ask people because they spent so long. Here, here they are. In case you ever saw them, I'll show you a picture of them. Okay. So this is Lynn and Diane Downing, and my wife and I. We Aww. went and stayed with them for for a week. Lynn has now retired, um, and he's living in Mississippi. But but that guy uh, was the pastor. Um, since I was five years old until he was at my ordination when I was ordained. So, oh my goodness, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, well, friends mm -hmm. like that are are hard to come by. Absolutely, Lynn Downing, right? Lynn Downing. Yeah, Birmingham is just a small town. I mean, you Very everybody tiny. knows everybody there. Yeah, but they they were they they he worked for for Briarwood for the last ten years, so I figured you know maybe maybe it was so, worth a shot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I mean, in that other denomination when I was in Birmingham. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the one that Mark's in. <laughs> the one that's 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 who I'm ordained with. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. there. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting week for them, I'm sure, yeah. uh, out in Anaheim. Now, Maggie, as you think about uh, biblical counseling, and you're writing this uh, research paper, thesis, I don't know what you call it, but a big project. Um, what do you see are some of the differences between working with women versus men? And I asked this for a friend named Jim Quigley because he's got both programs. CJ just has men. But Jim has two programs. Carry Home is is one for women there in North Carolina that Jim supervises. So what are some differences or some things that you see maybe distinctives in counseling women with uh, drunkenness as an issue? Well, I think men are going to be um, more outwardly uh, willing to display anger, whereas women are going to internalize it much more. And we might see it as more of a, um, a root of bitterness or turned into depression. And um, they're going to be typically much quieter about expressing it. Mm. So I think we're going to see more anxiety. I think that's become more socially acceptable for women than it has for men to talk about their anxieties as though it's um, a badge of courage. And I also think that eating disorders um, or even an abusive background could be part of the distinctives that would surface with women. I'm sure there are others, but those are the main ones that I've seen. Yeah. Jim, what, what kind of things have you seen with the, the differences? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, it's interesting to say that. Um, uh, I've uh, I've gone through quite an evolution um, <laughs> when it comes to my opinion on working. Um, I was uh, I struggle with black and whiteness, um, where everything is just black and white. And I looked at uh, um, dealing with uh, females that are struggling with 
substance abuse of not being very different than dealing with men. And I'm learning the hard way that I was very wrong with, with, uh, with that uh, opinion. Um, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I definitely see what Maggie's talking about the in, in internalizing, um, a lot more where guys just wear it all over themselves. And it's just, you know, it's very, very easy to come out. Um, and, um, um, it does, uh, um, it, it does, uh, uh, affect them and it, it, the, the environment, um, in, in our little, in our little program, um, it's infected at the, the environment way differently than, than the men's environment. Whereas, uh, you know, in the men's house, you have a conflict, it's pretty obvious, you deal with it and, and you move on. And in the girl's house, it kind of starts slowly and just kind of <laughs> builds up and, and, uh, you know, you start noticing a little bit different here and there. And then within, um, you know, within a amount of time, and then there's a giant explosion of emotion and um, and all kinds of stuff that they have been internalizing, and and it's usually much more difficult because if you're de if you're used to dealing with conflict that explodes at the house on the men's side, and something that hasn't been internalized and built up over a long period of time, you know, it's kind of easy to deal with it, and you kind of move on, but it's just much longer lasting on the girl's side um, because they just don't, they just, I don't want to use, I want to use fair lane. It just doesn't, they just don't get over that situation fast, fast, like the, like on the, on the men's side of, and, and I, I don't want to sound unfair, but in my experience, in my small experience, the girls have been much more deceptive and manipulative. That's true. That's absolutely true. Because um, because of the internalization, we don't want you to think badly of us. We're much more likely to be the overt people pleasers that fear man uh, and are going to be secretive about, you know, expressing that. Whereas yeah. men may or may not care about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the on with dealing with the men for the majority, um, you know, maybe because I'm, I, you know, I'm a man and I lived as an active in active addiction for a third of my life and know all of the markers of men. It, it's like, it's very easy to see, you know, on the men's side, whereas just like Maggie was saying on the women's side, uh, it's not, it's just not. And uh, it has made me knowing these giant differences has made me um, uh, better equipped because I just don't take things right off face value. A lot of times with the women, you just got to be patient and kind of learn how to ask questions to dig a little bit more, dig a little bit more, dig a little bit more. And, um, and that, I, that is not natural for me. That has been some spiritual training that I've had to learn while being here. So. Yeah. Uh, women in general in counseling are really not as forthright with expressing their issues. I've seen that in marriage counseling. You'll hear hear the guy just come right out and say what his stuff is. But the woman, it, you're going to have to be that man of understanding that can draw out the heart and really try to look at their whole life the, for themes and patterns that may have uh, run through throughout their life. Not that it's causative, but how have they responded to certain situations throughout their life. And if part of that response has been not truth telling, then that is a, an extremely huge hurdle that we have to overcome in any kind of counseling, especially in addiction counseling. Absolutely. So I'm hearing you guys say there's a difference between men and women. And I thought our culture said, basically everybody's the same. Gender is, is fluid all on the spectrum and they're really i'm confused no you're not mark <laughs> <laughs> are you are you telling the truth right now mark <laughs> no probably. i think he's opening opening another can of worms no. yeah yeah we're gonna get censored for sure on that one right i i'm refraining restraining myself over here from commenting if we're <laughs> recording, uh, you know I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is kind of good having you recorded. It, it keeps you from uh, 
blasted me. That's good. <laughs> Maggie, no. no, she she nailed it. And I think the manipulation and the and I know I don't have a I'm not totally qualified here because I don't have a we don't have a women's program, but I do have a wife and daughters. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Not that, yeah. and so again, men and women are. Hey, hey, CJ, we are recording. Okay, by the oh, way. I'm gonna, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Leave that out. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if your wife and daughters listen to these things, so be careful. <laughs> be careful. Tread lightly. Uh huh. What you're about to say. Well, Proverbs eleven twelve says, "Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent." Now that's wow. a good one. Wow. I just and got Proverbs. Reviewed. Proverbs 14, 6, a scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. The man of understanding will draw out the heart and ask good questions. Uh, all of that is is good stuff. That's what Maggie was referring to a second ago. Now, Maggie, when you have a lady who isn't um, forthright with you, are there things you pick up on that you sense or that you see or that you can read when you're you're not sure you're getting the whole story or maybe she's not being as forthright and honest uh, are, are there things that we can pick up on as uh as counselors well i think she'll give us some clues but they're going to be um more more related to her emotions about how she's feeling about certain things mm-hmm. and so when we um have somebody that's not willing to be forthright or really it's a good practice for almost anyone we can have them do what jay adams recommended long ago and fill out the form of developing the problem patterns and cue in like if they are struggling with um, anxiety and have them write down what were the situations that caused them um, to be anxious and you know, what happened and what they were thinking and what they wanted during that period of time and then go back and, and review and look look at them. And maybe there are two or three things. Maybe they're coming in and they're anxious and they're depressed. And I think you have to um, narrow down which one of those three is the primary issue that you begin with. And of course, you do address them all, but you can't eat the elephant all three bikes at the time. You have to take one at a time to address. That's right. You mentioned, um, and that's really helpful. You mentioned being widowed and I thought, you know, that's, that's a topic not addressed often by churches. And sometimes, you know, none of us really, are sensitive to that kind of thing. And so when, when that happened, I mean, I met you six weeks later, but what are some life lessons you can give ladies who lose their husbands and, or guys that lose their wives? Well, for me, I I think that it's important for me to be around a variety of different people. I'm one that would, that enjoys being around all ages and stages of people. And I don't, like it when I'm pigeonholed with, okay, be with the older women and be with them alone. I mean, we need to interact and be the church and the church is not just made up of segmented groups of people. And that includes people that are struggling with addiction. We don't need to just segregate them over here. Maybe we do have some special care classes that helps care for them. But we, in general, need to get all of us, widows, people that struggle with addiction and every other sin that we struggle with, integrated into the mainstream body of Christ is my feeling. And if I could make a difference in calling that out for the church, I would. (laughs) That's so good. CJ, what do you think about that? Well, I'm getting ready to send you and Jim a text. And I'll just go on the record and say... I'm being sarcastic because <laughs> but you'll see. I, I, I said, God told me, which he didn't, <laughs> that you need to move to Iowa. <laughs> we, we, we need you here. See, like, Dad, I don't even know where Iowa is. <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard of John Wayne? Yes. Mm-hmm. 
This is John Wayne's birthplace right here, oh my right word. down the road. You oh need to come word. see us. You need to come okay. to <laughs> come to Winterset. And you just never know. Maybe we'll start up a women's refuge if you move here. No. <laughs> North Carolina is a lot closer uh, to Georgia than Iowa. Jim, so. Jim, <laughs> mute him. Mute him right now, Mark. But now you're not in North Carolina, right? No, I, I, I were, when you were saying that, yeah, I am in North Carolina. I'm in, I'm in uh, Western North Carolina, Boone. Oh, okay. I don't know why I, th I didn't think you were. Okay. I, I, remember I, did, I, I knew you were, but I didn't think you are now. No, yeah. yeah, that's where I am. I we were. Did I just have the Oregon thing up? Is that what it was? Maybe but, I don't know. Yeah. No, I, you know, Jim is in a resort town of snow skiing and play and beauty. Oh, and yeah. CJ is in John Wayne's birthplace, the heart, <laughs> the heart of America, <laughs> Iowa. That's All the corn at. you can eat. <laughs> There's so much more than corn here. <laughs> That's anyway, <laughs> Mark, you're not helping me at all. I'm yeah. sorry. I just couldn't, couldn't resist. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I just, Maggie, can, Maggie's can I just a treasure. Real quick, or is it your Maggie turn? is a treasure. That's what you were saying. Yes. I was saying, I, and, and I just want to say this real quick. Uh, it just encourages me. And I know I can't imagine how hard it is to, to be a widow and, to, but to see you, running well and pressing in uh, because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but my story, uh, I was led to the Lord by a widow uh, oh, no. uh, and, and she was 90 years old and she oh, had wow. been a widow for 40 years, but she had been, or dang near 40 years, but she was my babysitter when I was a little boy. And, and many people in my Southern Iowa area have testimonies of her uh, leading them to the Lord, or at least planting seeds that eventually uh, they came to know the Lord through her ministry to them. So I just want to encourage you to keep running, keep pressing in, keep, you know, making much of Jesus everywhere you go, because I just, I'm super encouraged by ladies like you. And I can't help but think of the passage in second Corinthians one, three through four, when I hear you talk and it says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So you stay Amen. after it. Amen. I appreciate your encouragement very much, CJ, very yeah. much. And, um, you know, the Lord has been very, very good to me. And Sam realized um, he went in the hospital one Sunday. We did not know he was that ill, and he died the next Sunday. And in the middle of the week, he realized that he was dying. And I can remember so clearly telling him that he may, but that it would not be long before I was there with him, but that as long as the Lord wanted me here and to remain, that I would try to serve him and honor him and honor our relationship, my relationship with Sam as well so anyway it's um there it has its difficulties but it also has its um i don't want to say advantages um i think paul said it about when you're free to when you're not entangled with things that you want to be entangled with <laughs> i mean i wanted to stay entangled with my husband but once he was gone then what am I going to do with that time? Well, the Lord still has called me to be his daughter and to serve him and to serve others. And so uh, meanwhile, that's what I know is my calling to do. And that's one of the reasons that it's so discouraging when there are people that do want to isolate you. I think that a lot of times in the church, and I'm talking about the church, not any particular church, that <clears throat> I think people don't know how to respond being around someone that's different, such as a widow or somebody that struggles with addiction or some other supersized sin that they may have encountered. They just really don't quite know how to, to deal with you, but we know how to deal with y'all. So, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe just give us a chance. <laughs> that's right. You know, that, that you hit, uh, you really hit a um, 
my love language. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> I don't believe in love language stuff, but, <laughs> but I, um, but something I'm passionate about and Maggie, you hit on it is God gave us a church of diversity, you know, Amen. Amen. and to, to pigeonhole people and say, okay, all the widows over there, all the drug addicts over there, yeah. all the, you know, and, and, and we miss that. And, and our tendency is to try to categorize people, young people here and this and that. Right. And there are times, sure, for, for some of that. So, of course. But, but I love the, the, the picture you painted of a, a widow in the church doesn't need to be segregated and put over here in a different group and given um, she or, or a widower. He, he, they need to be part of the fabric of the diversity of the body of Christ. Amen. Yes. Yes. And amen. Amen. Yes. You, you hit, uh, you hit something near and dear my heart with that, because that mm. that's so true. Mm. Um, now Dave Birch is at your church, right? Yes. And Fran is also a friend of mine. Dave is as well, but of course women are, you know, we, we flock together, you know, how women do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Dave, I mean, he has songs, lyrics, hymns mem memorized, an amazing mind, and a very uh, sincere, loving man. I, I really appreciate him. I stayed with them when I taught down there at a conference years ago. And then, uh, is it John Crott? Is is that right? John Crotts, C R O T T S. He wrote, Crotts. he actually, well, he's written several books, but most re recently, he wrote one of the 31 day devotionals on hope and it is outstanding. And it has like little questions every day for people to answer. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a master's grad with his MDiv, and then he got his D man at Southern seminary. Yeah. He's a yep. wonderful man, a great yeah. pastor. Yeah. And his daughter, Carissa used to write for world magazine and would interview me sometimes for drug addiction articles that she would write. And I would be, of course, the, the, the crazy voice in the, in the addiction world, at least to, to secular readers, but to biblical people, I think they uh, understood where I was coming from, but. Uh, she has told me that. In fact, she was here for lunch a couple of days ago and I told her about my thesis and she, and I'm like, but you cannot have it. It's a thesis outline is what it is. It's going to end up being like 20 to 30 pages of the outline. If you decided to go back and write the full blown thesis, which I took an elective course, so I don't have to go that route. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in any event, um, I know how succinctly she writes. And so I said, Carissa, you can read it, but not until I, Martha and I are done because I know I wouldn't meet the 20 or 30 pages what you got to hold up. <laughs> oh, she's a, she's a gifted writer and uh, really liked her, uh, her work there at world. So, yeah, I will tell her that she's really precious. She has a little girl now. Carissa did think very highly of interviewing you and I'm oh. trying to type her in to go into the IABC conference. I'm like, well, Mark Shaw be there. And so you might yeah. have to come. So yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that'll that'll be at the end of July, IABC, and uh, CJ will be there, right? <laughs> I'm planning awesome. to go. We'll see. The, yeah. the Lord may change my plans. <laughs> we got to get you to the summit, young lady. Mm. I came in 2020, and then it was really strange because I, my airline reservation. I had to leave before I got my certificate. So I got my certificate in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I and remember last year I couldn't come because of COVID. Right. So yeah. I will come every year that I'm able to. I mean that I'm that I can. I know. I know you will. I I just want want you to be there. It's fun to see you and yeah, I enjoyed it. I yeah. loved every minute of it. Well, I'm going to ask CJ if he would pray for you as we wrap up this podcast. Would you do okay. that, CJ? Absolutely. All Thank right. you. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. So thankful that you use all kinds of different people from all kinds of different walks of life. And Lord, we are so thankful for that you saved Maggie and that you uh, just through all the the good, the bad, the ugly, the trials, the storms of her life, the hard stuff, 
you have been so faithful in continuing the work that you began in her life. And uh, Lord, I'm just so excited how you're going to continue to use her in her local <laughs> church down there in Georgia and also here in the TAC network. Uh, what a blessing. What a gift. We're so thankful uh, for her. And Lord, uh, we're just thankful for you saving wretches, wretches like us um, and using us for, for your glory and our good. Help us to continue to make much of your name and your fame, wherever we go, whatever we do. And Lord, I, I can't help but I'd love to have Maggie up here in Iowa, but mm -hmm. George is where she's supposed to be, so be it. But uh, Lord, we're just, just use her, continue to use her, and just continue to just uh, help her to run with joy all the way to the finish line. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you and praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It was nice to talk with all of you. And Mark shall tell Mary shall hello. And, and I will. And Sarah also. I will. Thanks, Great Maggie. to talk to you, Maggie. Nice to talk with all of you. Bye. 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 -bye. God bless. Thank you. You too.